I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. Buddy, how you doing today? Here I am in near downtown Macon, Georgia. What's this over here? My Charles H. Jones Gateway Park. And what I came here for is gone. Look at this. Mile marker given by Potpourri Garden Club. Okay. Now let's look here. Gateway Park. Gateway Park. Oh, it's huge. You are here. Okay. I am there. Now this looks to be a bit of a newer, uh, yes, definitely, because here you can see Almond Gray, the Almond Brothers. So we're down here. Anyway, this is going to be a very, very difficult video to do. I'm doing a video about Otis Redding, King of Soul, the, one of the greatest musicians of all time. Life cut very, very short. Otis Redding, making his home. Otis Redding uh, grew up not too far from here, then lived here, worked here, started his career here. And right here, I believe right where I'm standing, right here, there used to be a statue of Otis Redding. Now, of course, the trail goes down there, goes down there so much. And I lined up some pictures to figure out exactly where it is. There's lots of information online, but not exactly where it is in the park. But I was told it was right here. And now I just read online that the statue has been removed for restoration and to be moved to a new spot that they're going to put it in. I believe in some sort of museum. So there's that. And it's owned not by the city, it's owned by his heirs. So it's not on display anywhere in the meanwhile. But it would have been uh, here, a really cool statue I wanted to show you. I didn't have to drive too far to get here, but it would have been really cool. Huh. I didn't expect the statue to be gone. This video is going to be um, quite different because I'm showing you some things, but I don't know exactly how much access I'm going to have to what I want to show you but I'm going to get close because Otis Redding was an incredible musician and I really wanted to see a few things having to do with him while I'm here in Macon <sighs> there seem to be some in the picture of the statue there seems to be some sort of stairs going down but the whole park's being redone apparently so there could have been they could have just taken them out and there could have been something down there I don't know. Let's go to another location nearby having to do with the great Otis Redding. tell you a little bit about Otis's life and came to this location that's a park named after Rosa Parks right there seems to be some sort of work going on outside of this building I'm hoping I can get in probably we'll see I was gonna say probably not but I'm always more positive take a look at this place that is the Macon Civic Auditorium beautiful building here in Macon and there's a little plaque here that says something about it 
Little Richard, Otis Redding, and the Allman Brothers Band performed here. And not only did Otis Redding perform here, this is where his funeral was held. Inside here, Otis Redding was heavily influenced by Sam Cooke and Little Richard. And after Little Richard left his band called The Upsetters, Otis Redding joined him. When he had his first minor hit, Shout Mama Lama. So, the story of Otis's breakthrough is pretty cool. He joined a band called the Pine Toppers, a local Georgia band. He also served as their driver. And when they traveled to Memphis, Tennessee, they were going to record at Stack Studios. At the end of the session, Otis sang two of his own songs. One was called These Arms of Mine, and that launched his career. A record label executive believed in him. A manager named Phil Walden passionately believed in him. Jerry Wexler is a head of Atlantic Records. They handled all of Stax Records. He said that Otis wore his heart on his sleeve. And that's what brought Otis Redding to a national audience. He started having a lot of hits. I've been loving you too long. Respect, satisfaction. Fa 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 Sad song. He arranged his songs as he wrote them, singing the horn and rhythm parts to the musicians, and in general, he sculpted his entire sound. That sound, which became known as the stack signature, would resonate for decades to come. Of course, try a little tenderness. A lot of people might know that song from Pretty in Pink, the Ducky song, Dancing in the Record Store. So it's Redding. My favorite song of Otis is Tramp. I think that song is incredible. Sing that with, um, who's his duet partner on that? Carla Thomas? I believe it's Carla Thomas. We sing along with him on that song. It's just incredible. He performed at Monterey, the California Pop Festival. And he was getting huge, but then tragedy struck. On December 10th, 1967, Otis and most of his backing band were killed when their chartered plane crashed into a Wisconsin lake. He was only 26 years old. He recorded a few different versions of City on the Dock of the Bay. That's his most famous song, I think. Everybody knows that song. But he, um, Renaissance Plaza. You can actually hear various versions online. Even on Apple Music, they have Take One available. And what is this place? Take one. Oh, is it open? I think it is. Take one. And um, it's cool because these there's sounds of seagulls and stuff that he had heard while he was initially writing the song. And you hear Otis doing the sounds of the birds. So about November 22nd, just a couple weeks before he passed away, they did the final um, uh, vocal take, the final... Uh, cut of the song and then he passed away and it was released but they did a few a bit more work on it they added the sounds of the birds and things like that I was kind of just wandering around but I think I think I think I think I think and I should mention that the song which is in parentheses sad song has f five fa's fa 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 I'm gonna walk around. It looks to be locked up, but I think I might be able to see something pretty interesting. Otis's family had postponed the funeral from December 15th to December 18th so that more could attend. And we're inside now where the funeral took place. More than 7,000 mourners showed up. James Brown was in attendance, Aretha Franklin. Jerry Wexler delivered the eulogy and he said, respect is something Otis achieved for himself in a way few people do. Otis sang, respect when I come home and Otis has come home.
All right, that was very, very, very cool being inside the Mink at Civic Guard Tour. I did not think I was going to get inside there. I had called for a couple of days um, at the box office, the administrative office, but nobody um, answered. So I assume it's like any auditorium, you know, unless there's an event going on, nobody's really there. But they're setting up for something, and I got to go inside, and you got to go inside with me, where they held Otis Rainey's funeral, but also where he performed in the All Brothers. It's so incredible. What a beautiful building. Look at that. That's amazing. All right, now we're going to go somewhere else having to do with Otis Redding. So are very interesting. Writings Ranch, about 20 miles north of Macon. His wife, uh, Zelma, still lives here. Uh, he had four children. He raised cattle here. This was his dream home. This was where he loved to be. And this is where he is buried on the property here. Now there's this house here, off to the left as you drive up. A really nice turn, like a circular driveway going up to the gate. And I think you can walk right up here. I'm going to just stay back a little bit. You see a sign right there. There's absolutely no one beyond this point. And of course, the big R for Reading right there. Now the house is much further back. And same with the grave of Otis Redding. It is quiet out here. It's a lot of land that he owned. I believe, I'm um, not sure if this is part of his or not, but I know that I think it used to be. It's open sometimes for, they have events or private events. I read that and I couldn't find any real uh, like pictures or anything of private events going on there, but I'll, I'll take another look. It's not open to the public at all. But like I said, there was seem to be like there was private events at some point or possibly. If you look it up online, the big old ranch, it says open Saturdays and Sundays, but it's not. His grave is inaccessible to the public. But straight down that driveway, that's where the house is. The white fence. The white fence might signify where his property ends. Not sure who lives in that house. Could be one of his children. Doesn't seem to be anybody home right now. Ah, this is really cool though. Kind of just walking along this lonesome road in Georgia. Wow. Ah, there's a grave view of the house right there. There's Otis Redding's house. Right there. I'll show you an aerial view. Right behind the house is like a circular kind of like platform and looks like the grave is right beside it and I believe his wife will be interred there as well uh, that's what I can tell from the aerial view that's where Otis is on the property so directly behind the house and there's some other buildings in the back there's I know there's a barn probably maybe two, maybe more than one barn but it's right in the back there I cannot believe that no other cars have come by here I've been here for a good 15 20 minutes already and nothing but yeah, I believe his grave is right behind the house. 
I'm actually pretty sure, certain that's where it is. Because you see, I've seen a picture of it online. And there's a white fence behind it, which is the same white fence you see here. Now, about his death, I, I'm not sure if many people know. He died in Madison, Wisconsin, just outside. It's about um, four miles from Madison, Wisconsin, in a plane crash. It crashed into Lake Monona, and there is a monument or a plaque uh, up for him there. So they were going to play at a place called the Factory in um, Madison, which is no longer there. It's near the University of Wisconsin. And weather was poor, heavy rain and fog, and as is a lot of the time with a case like this, uh, they were warned that it was not great weather, not great conditions. And they were about four miles from their destination and the pilot radioed for permission to land. And then shortly thereafter, the plane crashed into Lake Monona. There was only one survivor and he was sleeping shortly before the accident. Just before impact, he woke up. Before he knew it, he was in the water and it's frigid. It was freezing. It's December in Wisconsin. He was unable to swim. He didn't know how to swim. So he was unable to rescue the others. The cause of the crash was never determined. Uh, so Otis Redding died. I'm going to read this here. Guitarist Jimmy King, tenor saxophonist Phelan Jones, organist Ronnie Caldwell, drummer Carl Cunningham, their valet Matthew Kelly, and the pilot uh, Richard Fraser was his name. And I believe his bandmates, most of them are teenagers. Most of them are young. Which makes it really all the more heartbreaking, of course. The next day, the lake was searched and Otis Redding's body was found. And then the funeral was held on uh, December 18th of that year. So the town here is called Round Oak. And this is where Otis Redding's final resting place is. Again, oh yeah, the, uh, the Madison Convention Center, that's where the plaque is. There's a memorial plaque um, to him there. Monona Terrace, I believe it's called. So yeah, this is a different kind of video because I'm used to going right up to the grave and getting close and showing you, but I could see why anybody would like it out here. It's absolutely beautiful. I drove a long time to get here because I was in Macon, but I've been to a few other cities since. This is a few days later, and I had to backtrack. Uh, my goodness, was it worth it just to come here to see that? So it was 300 acres when Otis acquired the land, and his wife has now grown it into 500 acres. And I read that, uh, well, I'm, I'm aware that in the mid-60s, an African-American man buying that amount of property wasn't uh, done, so to speak, and or, and or people did not like that. That's unbelievable. So they had, his wife said they had to acquire some of the land quietly. And some landowners around here refused to sell to an African-American man. Unbelievable. So yeah, even though he was one of the biggest names at the time, he still had trouble buying land, this amount of land. But yeah, so I'm not sure. I guess maybe they bought a, a little bit at first and then more and then more. But like I said, white landowners refused to sell. Yeah, that's unbelievable. But sadly, very believable. Wow. And this was his dream house and he never got to stay here as long as he wanted. Never got to live here for, he should still be alive. Retired, relaxing with his wife, who I said still lives here. Yeah, she was, I read an interview with her. She said it was just very difficult to get the land back then because of what was going on in the South in the 60s. 
But they did it. And they built a beautiful place. The big old ranch. Right there. Wow. And there's no grave to visit for me, like I've said a thousand times. But since there seems to be this sign is a well, it's the best I'm gonna be able to do. For Otis. That's for him. All right, thanks for watching everybody. This was quite a journey. This is something that I've been wanting to do since I started YouTube, was to come out here and see Otis's uh, ranch, even though I knew I could only see the driveway. Bucket list. Wow, it's beautiful out here. If you ever get a chance, look it up, Big O Ranch, Big O Ranch. You can find it, you can come out here and take a look. It should be, uh, it's, uh, again, his, his wife um, didn't want to turn it into something like Graceland. I read something along that line. That's why it's not open to the public. She didn't want it to be that sort of thing. It's her home. It's her house. It was her house with Otis. And that's what she wanted it always to be. Got to respect that. And uh, got to respect a family's decision to keep the grave private. That's it's Otis' music belongs to all of us. But Otis, um, you know, he's a father and a husband. And I respect that. And anyway, this is just as cool to me coming out here. Rest in peace, Otis Redding, and to the other um, victims of that plane crash. Terrible. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you all. Peace out.